You may never have heard of third-hand smoke, but you likely have smelled it, even though smoking is banned in many public places here. We have an expert to get to the point, Dr. Yvette van der Rijk. So, Yvette, we know about second-hand smoke, which, simply put, is the smoke from burning tobacco products like cigarettes and cigars. But what is third-hand smoke and its uh, differences to second-hand smoke? Just to elaborate first on secondhand smoke. So secondhand smoke is the smoke that comes off a cigarette when it burns and what the person is exhaling when they're smoking a cigarette, right? So when those particles then settle on surfaces, like on the wall or on the floor or on whatever surfaces are around where the person has been smoking, then that is called thirdhand smoke. Why is exposure to thirdhand smoke then considered harmful? Well, because third-hand smoke contains a number of toxic particles, just like second-hand smoke, right? So it is known to contain nicotine, various carcinogens, and heavy metals, and they are also dangerous for your health. Could you elaborate on that? Like, um, how the fact that even though it's on surfaces and we're not inhaling it directly, how is that dangerous for us? Well, because if, say, you touch those particles and it goes into the body, and especially for children, right? Because if you think about children, especially very young children, uh, like infants, when they're still crawling, you know, they're crawling on the floor and then they're touching surfaces and then, you know, putting their hands in their mouth quite a lot. Uh, So that can contribute to various diseases as well. What are the risks associated with exposure to third-hand smoke for, you know, children and for adults as well? Well, actually, the research based on this is still emerging, but studies have linked third-hand smoke exposure to asthma, respiratory disease, and cancers in adults. And in children, it may also be linked to neurodevelopmental issues, allergies, and gastrointestinal diseases. I see. Well, uh, Yvette, then what are the most uh, common situations where you know, each of us encounter third-hand smoke? Typically, third-hand smoke will be present in a place where a person has been smoking, right? So for instance, say if you live in a house and one of the family members smokes in certain parts of the house, then third-hand smoke will most likely be present on the surfaces. For instance, the wall or the furnishings, like the curtains or the rugs or whatever furniture was lying around. It's also present in ventilation systems quite often. So for instance, say if you have someone smoking in one of the bedrooms, right? And the bedroom might be, maybe they're running the air conditioning while they're smoking in the bedroom. So then the third hand smoke particles will also likely be present in the aircon ventilation system. Are you able to pinpoint any materials or surfaces that, you know, that retain, that hold the most amount of third hand smoke? It depends a lot on different factors, right? Not just the type of surface, like whether it's a smooth surface, uh, like a floor, like a tiled floor or something like a carpeted rug. It depends also a lot on things like the ventilation of the room, how often it's cleaned. So, I mean, for instance, say if you have a room where someone is smoking very heavily and there's a lot of soft furnishings like fluffy rugs that don't get cleaned very often, we could expect quite a bit of third hand smoke to retain there as opposed to, say, a room where, say, it's a smooth tiled floor that is cleaned very regularly, that is well ventilated, and where someone is only smoking, say, once in a while. 